Thank you very much for, att for attempting the F7 revision mock. Uh, what I need to do with you here today is a little debrief of the, your performance and indeed um, where I can add a little bit of explanation to what you've done. So thank you for your time and let's see if we can uh, get in focus the need to pass this exam this time. As you know from December 2014 the papers changing radically. We're going to get 22 mark multiple choice questions and the thing that worries me is that the examiner might test you on very obscure parts of the syllabus as happened with SEMA when they first changed to multiple choice. Students were struggling with the 40 mark multiple choice section because they uh, found that it was, um, the examiner was going for very obscure parts of the syllabus. So can I just say it's extremely important that you must get this paper this time and not have to face a complete change in the examination style. So what is it in, in the exam these days? How is, it it how is it examined? Obviously we have our 325 markers and questions 4 and 5, also compulsory, 15 and 10 marks. And the thing that's causing the biggest problem, I suppose, is standards, because standards are 15 marks of published, 5 marks of cash flow and ratios, which is question 3, and of course questions 4 and 5 are entirely standards and standard setting. So if you just add those, those standards bits together, it'll be 45% of your exam. So any effort you can make between now and the exam, even though time is short, I would suggest put it into standards. Once you've reached a certain level of proficiency with regard to consolidations, uh, published and cash flows. And that's exactly what this session is all about. The paper there, nothing much I can say. Primrose, you will remember this question well. A big company acquired 900 million ordinary shares in Sunflower on that date. What I find quite a useful thing to do is putting down the year we are dealing with. So the year we're dealing with here is 1st of December 2013 to 30th of November 2014. So if you acquired on the 1st of December 2013, it feels like the first day of this financial year. So if I was a bit casual about the year end I'm dealing with, <coughs> and if I think of it in terms of a, if I think of it in terms of a calendar year, I could easily mess up the number of months that are post acquisition, etc. So once you get your dates fixed up, it's really very easy. Something I've noticed in recent times is the examiner is getting quite um, into this part payment in cash, part payment in shares, part payment deferred consideration or contingent consideration has happened in December 2013. So you've got to be aware of the fact that you might have to work quite hard to get your investment at cost. Now most students would rather have the examiner say to them, look, the 900 million ordinary shares were acquired in Sunflower, the subsidiary, and they pay paid whatever, $9,000 in cash. It, it isn't like that anymore these days. It tends to be fragmented. And in the early part of the question, you have this challenge, and that's what troubles many students. So can I just say, get stuck in there, uh, sort it out, expect to have to work very hard to get your investment at cost. And as you know, if you get your investment at cost right, your goodwill is probably going to be right as well, uh, provided your net assets is right. That's another battle. So clearly here, if you work down the page, these are 25 cent shares 
So these will be obviously 1,200 chairs. 300 becomes 1,200 because they're 25 cents each. And of course, as you work up here, I'm sure you saw 900 acquired out of 1,200 gives us a percentage, obviously, of 75%. And so you'd have done that in your group structure, though probably you would have scribbled something onto your question paper as you first read the question. So it must be a sub, and the NCI is 25%. So how you approach the question is extremely important. If you go about it saying the examiner is going to give me the amount paid in cash and that's all there will be, you won't go far with this consolidation uh, challenge that he's setting us these days. I would suggest walking to that exam expecting some of it to be in cash, some of it to be a deferred consideration, some of it to be shares, and so on. And so as you build up your knowledge of these little skills, when the examiner sets it, you know that you are, it's familiar territory. Many students uh, you will leave behind just by knowing that. It's almost an attitude of mind. All right, what else? Immediate cash payment, good stuff, that's lovely. A share exchange of two shares in Primrose for four shares in Sunflower. I wonder whether you took a look at that closely enough. Now, clearly the four shares in Sunflower is not the 1,200 shares, but the 900, because you wouldn't give shares to the NCI, would you? If you were buying 75% of my company, in other words, 900 shares out of 1,200 in thousands, okay, or millions, the, the 900 you've acquired out of my 1,200, those are the only people you'd give your shares to. You get that? So when you have two shares in Primrose for every four shares in Sunflower, what you've got to be able to do, I suppose, is grab hold of the 900, divide by four, multiply by 2, that makes it 450, and each of these apparently is 90 cents. And so the answer there is going to be 90, 450 times 90 cents, as we will see in due course. What else? A deferred cash payment deferred, postponed, of 17 cents per share acquired payable on the 1st of December. So that looks like the day after this financial year end. So it's deferred, and then it says the company's cost of capital is 7%. So I'm sure you took 1 divided by 1.07 to the power of 1 because obviously it's one year away. And if it is two years away, the deferred payment, you'd have to say 1.07 to the power of two, that kind of thing. Okay, so not too bad. Tapping that into a calculator, you'll get your present value factor, as we will see. I'm sure you did that. And 59 cents is the <coughs> value of the shares for the subsidiary, and of course that's used for NCI. So the big thing is to be able to sort out why is it the examiner is giving me 17 cents? Oh yes, that's the deferred consideration which I need to dis discount. Why is he mentioning 90 cents? Oh yes, 90 cents is the value of the Primrose shares. What I see some students doing is Primrose You've got to obviously think it's 90 cents, but you mustn't say primrose and sunflower. Primrose is 59 and sunflower is 90. Now that will completely spoil your answer. So you've got to, if primrose is mentioned first, you've got to read that first. In other words, primrose is 90, sunflower is 59. Otherwise, nothing much in that part of the question once you accept the need to fight your way through that. Parent there. 75% sub there, and even if this acquisition was in the middle of the year, if you're doing a balance sheet type exercise, statement of financial position, you would never take six twelfths, even if it was in the middle of the year. But if you're doing a P&L, then you do take the second half of the year. 
So you must approach a balance sheet, an SFP, in a completely different way to the P&L.